creation of all. We see love in almost all its forms, and we go, mmm, we like that. That's heaven on earth. Of course, when love goes south, especially in intimate relationships, we're in hell and others is other people territory. So we want to spend a lot of time in heaven on earth and not much time in hell as other people. How do we do that? How do we become a candidate for that kind of relationship? How do we find people like that? Enter a five-star practice for creating beautiful relationships. The five stars are five questions we can ask ourselves about other people. And if we ask these questions enough, our brains will start asking these questions for us. And if the answer to even one of these questions is no, the chances of negative drama in that relationship go up. And if the answer is yes or probably, the odds of a relationship with that person being good, those go up. And the five stars are really simple. Is there sexual polarity between me and this other person, an erotic spark? Does this person maintain their physical and psychological health? If I was in a relationship with this person, would they be able and willing to do what it takes to get back to love? Would this person be a superior parent? And does this person have deep purpose, something larger than themselves that involves service that they're committed to? Now, how can we possibly know all this information about other people? Well, our brains are genius. Every second, they take in millions of inputs, and they associate, anticipate, and create stories. We have mirror neurons in our brains, mirror neurons that when we look in someone's eyes and we talk to someone, they recapitulate that person's state of consciousness, including their intent. One study showed that people that knew somebody for a few seconds, looked in their eyes and talked to them, knew as much about their personality as people that knew somebody for five weeks. If we ask the question, our brain will answer. And if we do it enough, our brain will take over, especially our right hemisphere. Now, what is sexual polarity? Well, all of us in the sexual occasion are either a more masculine person, more the leader in the dance of eroticism, attracted to the feminine form and energy, or a more feminine person, more the follower in the dance of eroticism, attracted to masculine presence and resources. Look around at the people in this audience. Just catch four or five people's eyes. Go on, go on. You can do it. Just look at people's eyes. Look at three or four people's eyes. There's little sparks of energy. Now, if there's a little bit of attraction, a little bit of eroticism, that's an erotic polarity. Yeah. Now, that spark can burn out of control in a secret affair. People in a good marriage and a committed lover relationship, they're feeding that spark together to create more love and deeper spirituality. And what does it mean to maintain physical and psychological health? Does that mean we're buff all the time, we never have any problems? No, it doesn't mean that. It means that if there's an imbalance, psychologically, relationally, or physically, we receive influence from ourselves and from other people to get back into harmony, to get back into balance. If you're in a relationship with someone who doesn't do that, you'll end up being codependent with their problem. Rage, addiction, something like that. If you give each other influence, receive it, and act on that influence, you create deeper love, more spirituality. And what's able and willing to do what it takes to get back to love? <laughs> able means we have communication skills, we have the ability to self-observe, we have the ability, under certain circumstances, to hold on to ourselves when we're anxious or we're ashamed or we're angry or pissed off. And willing means we'll make it all the way back to love. We won't flake out in the middle and attack somebody or, or rage at somebody or depart and leave. And what's Deep Soul's purpose? Deep Soul's purpose is something larger than ourselves. It could be art. It could be work. It could be parenting. Any of those things, it could be music, it could be sports, that involves service to other people that's sacred to us. If we're in a relationship with someone, we need to, and they have that, we need to see it and admire it in them. And if we have it, they need to see it and admire it in us. And if we practice this enough, not just with people who are potential partners, with everybody, in several months, our brains will start noticing and doing this for us. And if you're in a relationship, ask yourself these questions about yourself and your partner. Now, if the answer to no is one, to one of them is no, don't go to the divorce attorney this afternoon. Don't do that. Have a conversation. 
And you know, if that conversation goes south, practice star number three. Be able and willing to do what it takes to get back to love. If that doesn't work, get influence from somebody, maybe a therapist, and get back into harmony. If you do this with that, after a while, you pull into a stop sign, you look over, you go, wow, there's erotic polarity between me and that person. <laughs> you see, walking down the street, and you see somebody, you go, they'd be a superior parent. You see a couple at a concert, you know, a couple in here. I, you know, I bet you're able and willing to do what it takes to get back to love. The five-star practice for creating beautiful relationships. Try it. It will rock your world. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Oh, my goodness. Thank you.